Welcome to our lecture on logic equations and logic reduction in digital circuits. So, what is a logic equation? In a digital circuit, we always are attempting to produce values based on some input. We have rules for these. These are logic equations. We represent a logic equation using the values of the inputs, usually A, B, C, or D, and our operators. Our basic operators are either the dot or an x for and, a plus for or, and a bar over top of the input for not. So let's look at an example of a logic equation and try to apply what we've learned. So on the top we have the logic equation for y and on the bottom we have the logic equation for z. I've already made a table so let's fill out the answers for y and z according to these equations. So for a not b or c, so 1 because a not and 0 is 0, or c, c is 0, so the answer is 0. In this one, the next one, 0, 0, 1, it's the same on the left part, but C is a 1, so we have a 1. If we look at this one, we have A naught, so 1, and 1, or 0. 1 and 1 is 1, so 1. We already know that any time we have a C from up here, we will have a 1, so let's start filling out the rest of these. Now, A naught and B or C. This becomes 0, 0, 0 is 0. Finally, we have A naught, so 0, and B, so 1, or C, which is 0. So this is 0 and 1, which is 0, or 0, which is 0. What we just did when we saw the pattern for C being a 1 always made a 0 is essentially logic reduction. Let's keep going though on Z and then we'll talk about what, how to actually do logic reduction. So, B and C or A and not B. So we'll look at B and C, here it's 0, 0, so 0, or A not B, which is 0 and 1, so 0. Let's try this one. We have the same result for A and B, so 0. B and C is not quite the same, is the same result for different inputs. C is 1, but it's ended with 0, so it's still 0. 0, 1, 0 will give us A and not B, so 0 and 0. 1 and 0, again, over here, will give us 1 and 0, so 0. Let's look at 0, 1, 1. This will give us 0 and 0, so 0, and this will give us 1, so we can put a 1. We have 1, 0, 0. We'll have 1 ended with not 0, so 1, so 1 and 1 is 1. We can also see that this 1 and 0 is repeated down here, so we know that this is 1. Here, we'll say 1, 1, 0, which is 1 and 0, so 0, and this is 1 and 0, so 0. And for 1, 1, 1, we'll have B and C, which is 1, 1, which is 1. We can ignore A and B because of this OR. So let's look at a logic reduction table. This is called a Carnot map. A Carnot map gives us another way of representing a circuit and logic equation. So we have our inputs A and B 
on the, the top row, we have our inputs C and D on the side row. What we can do using the Carnot map is then place our outputs in the corresponding boxes to the inputs. Carefully note that our inputs do not count up in binary order. They count up in what's called minimum bit flip order, which means that we only change one bit at a time. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 instead of 1, 0, and then 1, 0. So, how do we use a Carnot map to reduce logic? We use a Carnot map to reduce logic by looking for groups of 1 in power of 2 sized groupings. This means if we find a 1 all by itself, or 2 1's next to each other, or 4 1's, or 8 1's for a really big Carnot map, or even 16, we can then begin to reduce the circuit by looking at what inputs do not affect the output. So, let's look at this first group here of four ones. We can notice that C and D vary for all of these inputs, or for all of these outputs, C and D keep changing, whereas A and B don't. What's interesting is that from this, we can tell that the output does not depend on C or D. So we can begin to write an equation by looking at what this column represents. This column is not A and B. So not A and B. Now let's look at this row down here. If we circle this row and our Carnot map groupings are allowed to overlap. That's very important. If we look at this row, we see that here A and B don't affect the output because they go through all of their possible values and the output is still 1. And for this, we have C and D must be 1, so we can write OR C and D. So, the general formula is find a group of all ones, determine what outputs don't matter, and then, sorry, what out inputs don't matter, and then determine what inputs do matter, write them and it together so that there are all ones. So in this case of 0, 1 for A, B, we made it not A and B, so 1, 1. And then we OR our groups together. Now, let's look at this Carnot map. This is only a three input Carnot map. And I've written the extremely verbose equation underneath of it. So if we look at this, A and B and C, we'll say when A is one, B is one, and C is one, we have a one. Or A and B and C not, A is a one, and B is a 1, and C is a 0, we get a 1. So, using our knowledge from last time, we can circle this group of two adjacent ones, and we can see that C changes. C goes from 0 to 1. Therefore, the output does not depend on C, and we can write our equation for this entire logic circuit as A and B. Thank you for watching this lecture on Carnot maps. Below the lecture, I will include more links to more practice problems.